Adlom stands for Ancient Domains of Mystery, and that's an old game now, first released in 1994 with ASCII graphics. You can buy it today on Steam and get the most up-to-date, most polished version. It'll have graphics, music, etc. and be a really cool game. If you're not sure, you can download an older version from their website for free and just try it out. Unlike Dungeon Man's or Tales of Majayal, which are more modern roguelikes and kind of intuitive and easy to play, this game plays like an older style roguelike, because that's what it is. It feels a lot like Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup or Dwarf Fortress Adventure Mode, and just like those games, it comes with lots of complexity and depth. What I'm reviewing here is the Steam version, which adds loads of nice features, but nicest of all is a difficulty level customization feature. It lets you tweak or disable various mechanics. Personally, I'm not a fan of the hunger mechanic. I don't enjoy having to manage that stuff in a roguelike like this, so I turn the hunger mechanic off completely. There's other stuff you can tweak on there, but for me, turning off hunger is enough. It also means that you can haul around more corpses for necromancy, because you won't be having to devour them if you're hungry. One last thing. This game is pretty complex, so what I cover here in this video is really just the tip of the iceberg of what this game is like. Just bear that in mind. With all that out of the way, it's time to talk about the necromancy. To begin, you create your character. A necromancer needs high mana, so you'd do best choosing a race that isn't like an orc or a troll or something like that. Human's a nice choice, so is Mist Elf. And with Mist Elf, there's also the potential for an alternative kind of necromancy called White Necromancy. White Necromancers do not raise the dead. Instead, they craft clay statues, golems, stuff like that. Here, though, I'm going to focus on Black Necromancy, which is the traditional kind of necromancy we all love, including zombies, skeletons, all that stuff. Mist Elves can also do traditional Black Necromancy. So they've got the choice between both kinds. So you start out with no minions. To get minions, you must first acquire corpses, which isn't easy. Not every enemy drops a corpse, which is actually really stupid and annoying in my opinion. Corpses drop very rarely. It feels like one corpse every 30 kills, but I don't know that the exact figures on that. If you kill an enemy and are lucky enough the corpse is dropped, you need to pick it up and resurrect it, or keep it in your inventory so you can resurrect it later. Because corpses are so few and far between, you'll feel pretty wary of wasting them. But you can't hoard corpses like a greedy madman either. They're heavy and they'll weigh you down, but even more infuriatingly, they'll rot away inside your backpack. So that corpse you've been lugging around for an emergency, it'll disappear right when you need it usually, which is pretty annoying. There's a skill called Food Preparation, which slows the decay of all food items, including corpses. That helps with this, but corpses are still going to expire on you. Before expiring, a corpse may become rotten. If that happens and you use it for a minion, it seems to be created with very low health. You can command minions using Control x and then C. Here you can give your minions specific commands to attack, move, wait, or follow. You can move them to a specific tile, or to attack a particular enemy. It's quite a useful ability, and only necromancers have this very fine level of control over their undead minions. Without these commands, your minions can wander around aimlessly, and not attack the enemy, and often behave in a kind of useless manner. So it pays well to use this control menu. I played about 8 hours of this during the week, and although I never managed to get a character past level 10, I've probably seen enough to give you the breakdown. Has it got plentiful minions? In theory it does, but in practice it does not. There seems to be no limit to how many minions you can have, provided you have the corpses to make them, but there's some problems. The first problem is that corpses drop so rarely that you'll be lucky to have a single minion most of the time. The most I've had at any one time was about 4 minions, and it was unmanageable. That's the second problem. The minion AI is awful. If you leave a minion to its own devices, it will behave in a bunch of really unhelpful ways. It may walk past enemies without attacking them, exposing you to harm. 
They might run off and never return. They might stand there being hit by an enemy and not retaliate. There's more ways that the minions can misbehave, but these are the ones I noticed the most. This unhelpful default AI means that you really are required to micromanage every single minion using the menu Reach with Control X and C. This becomes a real problem when you've got many, many minions because you're going to have to be doing this for each and every minion. To command a minion, you do the Control X key combination, which opens the screen, and then you press C. You then have to target the minion you want to command by using the movement keys to move the cursor to the minion you wish to command, and then press T to target it. Then you must choose the action the minion should perform. You press A for attack, M for movement, F for follow, and H for hold position. If you choose the attack or movement commands, then you must additionally target the enemy that your minion should attack. This menu is annoying enough with just one minion to command, let alone multiple minions. It'd be fine if the base AI was useful enough to mostly fend for itself and you only had to use this menu in special circumstances, but unfortunately it's needed in every circumstance or your minions will just not do anything useful. Now we come to the next point. Has it got useful minions? The minions in the game are somewhat useful provided you take the time to command them properly with the command menu. Zombies and skeletons are the beginner creations and are very weak, but at level 6 you can get the ghoul, which is a lot better and can also paralyze the enemy on hit. At level 10 you can get the shadow, which is quite good, and the minions beyond that continue to grow more and more powerful, until at level 50 you have the lich. From what I've seen so far, I doubt the minions could ever be viable enough to be your primary means of dealing damage. Are the minions permanent? Good news, the minions are permanent. They will persist until killed by enemies or left behind by you. The minions follow you as well when you change areas, but only if you're right next to them. So minions you want to keep must be commanded to stand on the tiles next to you before you transition areas. Is the caster weak and squishy? The caster is not particularly weak or squishy. Unfortunately, most of the game is spent without minions due to the very rare corpse drops. As such, you're your own primary damage dealer. So the golden pillars of satisfying necromancy have been covered. All that's left is to give the final score for its minion gameplay. Plentiful minions, 5 out of 10. Useful minions, 5 out of 10. Permanent minions, 6 out of 10. Squishy and weak caster, 5 out of 10. Total score, 5 out of 10. Although this is a good roguelike, it fails to deliver a satisfying minions experience. A pure minions build is not possible because the mechanics for creating minions ensure that minions are difficult to acquire and because of how tedious it is to manage the minions once you have them. The main things that could be done to fix minions in the game would be to first of all give them adequate AI. Micromanaging every basic thing gets tedious. You shouldn't have to do it. Secondly, make corpses drop more frequently or come up with a better way of making the minions. Corpses are just so few and far between that it destroys the feasibility of a pure minions build. You just can't do it. There's dry spells in the game where no corpses drop, or situations where you're just killing beasts, and these can't be reanimated because they're not humanoid, and that means you won't have any minions. As for the roguelike itself, I'd probably give it a 6 out of 10. It's decent. It's not the best in my opinion. It feels a lot like Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup, but it's better than that game. So there you have it. Ancient Domains of Mystery. A good roguelike, but not such a great game for necromancers who want to rely completely on their minions.